Hi, this is Karen at Snickerdoodle Designs, and today I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to use my new directional brushes. This is a preview of the collection of brushes. Each product is available individually as well. There are three packs of stitching brushes as well as one set of stitching styles. And the styles have a nice um, light texture to them as well as a tiny bit of a shadow to make the stitches look real very realistic. Whoa, bring it up too close and it doesn't look good, but uh, it looks very, very realistic. So let's go ahead and close that out and get started. Um, some of you may not be familiar with brushes, so I'm going to start with just a couple of little basics very quickly. We'll grab our brush right here. I'll come up here and I'll just grab this tulip brush. I'm using Creative Cloud 2015 today for this demonstration. I have a blank layer here. And if you like, you can just stamp one time if you want to use that just as a little embellishment somewhere and add a style to it. If you'd like, you can stamp, hold your left mouse down, and then create whatever shape you want by freehanding that shape. Additionally, if you would like a straight line, you can hold down the shift key, and while you keep holding that down, stamp your brush and then pull to the right and you will have a constrained straight line. But what's special about these brushes is that they are what I call, or what we call, directional. And that means that the brush changes direction as it follows a path. Let me show you what I mean by that. Now, uh, before I get into that, the first part of what I just showed you is available in Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. Paths which is what we're going to be working with right now, are not available in Photoshop Elements. So coming back to the stitches, this is a non-directional path. Let me go ahead and grab that particular brush and so you can see what it looks like. Okay, this is that brush as a single stamp. And I have taken the directional attributes off of this brush just for this demonstration and I followed a circle path and you can see that the brush did not change shape it did not move or change directions however when I put the brush back to how it originally was created and how it is in the product you can see it looks totally different as I've gone around the circle the brush has changed directions and it's made a really nice pattern and here is a second example. This is not directional. You can see it looks quite ugly. And then here is that stamp with the directional attribute put back on it. And that particular stamp is this one right here. Okay, so how do you make it follow a path? Let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to get rid of these just for ease of keep my palette a little bit cleaner here, my panel a little bit cleaner. Here's a background. Let's go ahead and create a new layer. And let's just have a brush follow a circle. So let's go ahead and make a, a nice circle here. Come back to my layers panel. And if you do not have your paths panel visible, you can come over here to Windows and Paths and click on that and it will be visible for you there. Now I am going to get rid of that as leftover. So in order to make, what we need to do is make a path from this right here. I'm going to um, rasterize this, right clicking and rasterizing it. So I'm going to hold down Control click on the thumbnail, and now we see the marching ants, and that is selected. If we come over to the Paths panel and come over to the fourth icon, so if we hover over it, I believe it says uh, create make work path from selection, click on that, and now you see we have a work path up here, and the marching ants have changed to the work path here. Let's come back to our panel and create a blank new layer, because I want to have my brush go around that circle, but I want it on its own layer. I don't want it attached to the uh, shape. Select your brush. Let's go back to the tulip. 
and making sure we're on that blank layer. If we come over to the second icon from the left, stroke path with brush, and if we stroke, all we have to do is click that, and I'll turn off the circle, and you see that we have a really pretty um, circle there that the brush has followed. If I do Control H, that will get rid of that visible path and it make it easier to see. Now you can see right here, this is overlapped a little bit, and that can be remedied in one of two ways. You can adjust your circle size, and then just uh, hit the brush button again and make it um, create a new uh, brush there, or you can come up to the brush presets and making sure you have your brush selected. If you click on the brush tip shape, you can come down here to spacing and just adjust your spacing. And then you can make that a very nice transition from the beginning to the end of the brush. And that's all there is to it. Now, to finish this off, come back and go ahead and apply style just by clicking on it. And now you have a really beautiful frame or um, wreath, anything you'd like this to be. Now again, this particular part, following the path, is not available in Photoshop Elements, but the first part of this tutorial is available in Elements. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at karen at snickerdoodledesignsbykaren.com. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And if you do pick up the product, I hope you enjoy using it. Thank you. See you next time.